176. No. <laughs> so, Deerfield Community Church is an open and affirming congregation, and so no matter where you are on life's journey, where you are physically, where you may be zooming in from this morning, you are welcome here. Very quick announcements this morning. Um, a reminder to all that the annual meeting is happening at 10.30 this morning, so there'll be about a 30-minute break between worship and the start of the meeting. We will leave this call up. You're welcome to visit with each other during that time. We're going to mute you here in the sanctuary while we're getting things ready, so don't try to talk to us, but you're welcome to visit with each other during that time, and about 10.30, our moderator, Cindy Bradley, will begin the meeting. Um, all are welcome to attend, and covenanted members are encouraged to participate in any voting matters. If you're a confirmand, I understand you've also been asked to attend as visitors to the meeting so you can get a feel for what an annual meeting looks like. No pressure, Cindy, but the new people are going to be watching. Um, so please do, uh, if you are a confirmand, please plan on attending. I know that's part of your homework. And um, I think that was about it. So let's be in a spirit of prayer and togetherness. And let us welcome the light of Christ among us this morning. please join in our opening hymn. It's printed in your bulletin, Gathered Now, and just check to make sure you are muted. Oh. Gathered now in the mystery of this hour, gathered now in one strong body, Gathered now in the struggle and the power, spirit drawn near. Gathered now in the mystery of this hour, gathered now in one strong body, gathered now in the struggle and the power. Spirit drawn near. Spirit drawn near. Will you join me in prayer, even though it doesn't say so in the bulletin? Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day and this time to come together in prayer, in power, in your spirit. We ask that you would help us to be aware of your presence all around us this morning. We pray that you might touch our hearts with your scripture and your story. We ask, oh God, that you would send us your power, that we might be your living hands and feet, your light in our world. We pray that in the midst of all this, you would hear our prayers and heed our petitions. Come, O oh God, we are gathered in your spirit. Bless us in this time. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we join our voices together using the words that he taught us saying, our Father and Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We have only one scripture reading this morning. I know it's hard to believe. Back there in Advent, we were having three and four brief scripture readings um, a Sunday, and uh, we often have two scripture readings, but today uh, the preacher settled on just one scripture reading, and it's not even all that long. It comes from Matthew, and it's a basic introduction to Jesus' hope and expectation that his followers will care for others, especially for those in need. We read this in Matthew, aware that it's the only one of the four Gospels that has this particular story. Um, while the idea of caring for those in need is clearly a universally held and understood basic of Jesus' teachings, this particular parable from Matthew is one of the clearest teachings we have from Jesus. It provides a guiding vision for much of what we believe and do at Deerfield Community Church. And it is a wonderful base for today's worship because today we examine and celebrate our work as mission ministers, as those who care for God's world and for Christ's people. I believe Evelyn has our reading. Sorry, I forgot I was muted. Um, I had a question. Is this particular uh passage specific to this sunday's liturgy or just you picked it i i picked it okay the reason i asked is i think this is the third time that i've read this passage and it's just really interesting it's like okay i'm getting the message really <laughs> well this morning's passage is from matthew chapter 25 verses 31 to 40 and it's from the Inclusive Bible Translation. At the appointed time, the promised one will come in glory, escorted by all the angels of heaven, and will sit upon the royal throne with all the nations assembled below. Then the promised one will separate them from one another, as a shepherd divides the sheep and the goats. The sheep will be placed on the right hand, the goats at the left. Then the ruler will say to those on the right, come you blessed of my loving God, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was ill and you comforted me in prison, and you came to visit me. Then these just will ask, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or see you thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you as a stranger and invite you in, or clothe you in your nakedness? When did we see you ill or in prison and come to visit you? The ruler will answer them. The truth is, every time you did this for the least of these who are members of my family, you did it for me. This ends the reading this morning. Thank you, Evelyn. Really appreciate it. And I appreciate your, uh, your note. <laughs> I, think, I think that must be a go-to Lisa scripture. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Well, this morning, um, as we as we're gathered, we love to circle up, and we circle up with our friend Jennifer. And I actually didn't see her um, on the screen, but I'm hoping that she's here. 
I'm here. I was, I was, I'm here. Yay. I had internet issues getting logged on. So I was a couple minutes late, but I'm here. Terrific to see you. And, and do you have something to circle us with this morning? Oh, I can find something to say. Sure. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Um, I, I don't really see any kiddos this morning as I scrolled, but I do see there's a couple of um, people that are not on video. Oh, I see Kaylee. Hi, Kaylee. Um, so uh, I, I uh, hope maybe some are joining us with no video, but that's OK, because I will speak to all you adults also. Um, so this morning, um, as you heard, we're talking a little bit about missions. And so missions is a group at church. Well, it's a big thing, but let me tell you what missions is at church. There's a group at church called the missions team. And I've been on this missions team for a, a really, really long time. And uh, the job of the missions team is to do things out in the world as God's hands. That's really, I kept thinking about how I could explain missions and how to define this team and this group and what this means. And what it really, really comes down to is doing God's work with your hands. And I'd like to challenge you to think um, about something that you would be interested in, um, some kind of group that you would be interested in taking care of so kind of let that spin in your mind for a minute and um <clears throat> the reason i'm asking you to think about some kind of group or cause or something like that is because doing god's work and being asked to do god's work sounds different to all of us so um every year we do a little bit of charitable giving at the beginning of the year in uh, my family with me and the girls who by the way are always here and never on camera um but they're here too uh, but so every year we would say okay who do we want to give some money to this year who do we want to help take care of this year and uh a lot of times um it might be, we might see the same things like a, a food pantry in our town, or uh, we would like to purchase food for um, Liberty House, which is a, um, a place in Manchester that helps take care of veterans or a homeless shelter. One of our favorite go-tos was shopping off the wish list for the SPCA because um, we were interested in buying things for animals. So that's why I was saying, think of different groups. When you think of who you want to take care of and how you want to do God's work, for you, that might mean people, and it might mean a specific group of people. You might feel like it's your job to see how you can help veterans or how you can help the homeless or how you can help um, all their, every group of of there, There's a million groups of different people who need help in the world. And it might be something like environmental, like save the whales or the rainforest or various um, environmental causes. It might be um, a country of the world. We're gonna hear a little bit about Haiti when we hear from some speakers in a little while. And so it might be a country of the world that's in need. And it might be something like animals, like we've done heifer project at church before. Whatever you feel like would be good for for you to take care of to do God's work is what you should do because it doesn't matter how many missions ideas there are how many ideas there are of taking care of others you have to find what speaks to you and go that way and our church has this really great system of saying we want your ideas and so you guys kids included any kids that are listening any kids that might see this in the future um kaylee sorry to point out again here i'll point out my jillian and allison there see they're pointed out too um think about what you're interested in taking care of because you're going to get 
ideas in, in your head sometimes. And you might think, what do I do with these? And at our church, we have this missions team that says, bring us your ideas and let's talk about it and see how we can support you, even kids. So when I invited you to let that roll around in your mind, what do you want to take care of? What do you want to do? I want you to keep thinking about that and just quietly listen. We've talked about this the past couple of weeks. Quietly listen to hear that conversation, that back and forth with God and see what maybe God wants you to do to take care of his world, his people, his animals, and all of that. So, uh, Listen, listen to where you're being pointed. Uh, let's be in prayer. Lord, we thank you for all the opportunities that we have to do your work. We know there are many, many, many chances. And we pray that we would hear you and listen to where you're directing us to know exactly how we can do your work with our hands here on earth. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Jennifer. Um, it's true. There are so many ways to serve God and to care for God's creation. Um, this morning, um, one of those ways is the ways that we all contribute to church and being the church together. And so we have a hymn that we're going to sing that um, you'll find on the back of your bulletin if you're printed a bulletin. It's called We Dream of a Church. And we're just going to sing it through two or three times. We dream of a church where everyone is welcome. We dream of a place we all can call home. We dream of a world where justice is flowing, with hope and peace growing, and God's will is done. We dream of a church where everyone is welcome. We dream of a place we all can call home. We dream of a world where justice is flowing, with hope and peace growing, and God's will is done. I picked two. Thank you, Tim, and thank you, Andy. So Evelyn noted that this scripture is a scripture that she's read several times. And uh, one of the things that I realized as she said that is that I keep picking this scripture when I have an opportunity to choose scripture because it reminds me of you, you, who are Deerfield Community Church. There are places where you can, churches and places where you can read this scripture and they hear it like they've never heard it before. But at DCC, it's, um, it's a scripture that reminds me of you. And so uh, I take it to heart that you all take this parable to heart. And the fact is you don't just take it to heart, you put it to work. Um, among yourselves and with others. Today, we're taking a closer look at four examples of the ways that you all take this story to heart and put it to work. We'll hear about uh, each of these mission efforts from a leader who knows a good bit more about it than I do. We could do a whole series in this way. When I looked at the list, when I was first thinking about this, and I thought, well, how many could we do? And I realized we could do weeks and weeks and weeks of four mission projects each. So we chose four um, in part because we had an offer from one person and uh, these are representative of the, some of the ways that you all put God's people um, in your care and, and offer mission and ministry to them. So um, 
the first is the least tangible and perhaps the least hands-on. Got that hands-on um, for, uh, for us and probably the least well understood as well because um, it's mainly money that we give. But one of the reasons that we wanted to highlight and bring it home and bring it to life a little better is because as a member, uh, a member church of the UCC, we participate in some missions that aren't even known to us. If I said to you, did you know that you were involved in a mission in um, South Dakota with the Native American reservation there in South Dakota, you might say, I'm not, but you are. And so we hear about these things that the United Church of Christ does, and we celebrate them because we're part of that. We're part of that through our giving, and we're part of that through some of our volunteering as well. As part of a larger community, as part of our denomination, our mission work extends around the world and throughout this country. So we turn to a true expert who has a few words to explain about our church's wider mission. And this is a video made especially for DCC by our conference minister, Gordon Rankin. Greetings, Deerfield Community Church. For those of you who don't know me, I am the Reverend Gordon Rankin, Conference Minister of the New Hampshire Conference of the United Church of Christ, whom you have called to serve among you. My heart is quite full today. First off, my heart is full with celebration. Celebration for the wonderful news that you all have called the Reverend Kurt Walker to come and serve among you as your pastor. There is no doubt in my mind that the spirit of the living God has drawn you and Kurt together. Today, my heart is also filled with gratitude. Gratitude for all the ways in which your church community has given to support our church's wider mission, often referred to as OCWM. Your OCWM basic support giving of $8,000 has been combined with the giving of other churches to make a vital impact in propagating the work of God here in New Hampshire, in our country, and all over the world. Through our national setting, you have given to support global missionaries and global mission partners, provided resources for worship and for justice conversations that are utilized by many of our churches. And in 2020, even provided some micro grants to support churches that have found themselves in a difficult place due to the pandemic. Through the New Hampshire Conference this past year, you have helped us develop all kinds of resources to support our churches in improvising their way through unexpected pandemic realities. To continue our outdoor ministries, even though we were unable to be on site at Horton Center, and to help over a dozen of our churches find new pastors, yes, you are one of them, to find new pastors in the midst of the extra challenges that have been created by COVID. These ministries that I have described are not just ministries of the United Church of Christ and the New Hampshire Conference. They are a ministry of your church. You have helped make them happen. And I hope that you celebrate that they happen because of you. So on behalf of not only the United Church of Christ and the New Hampshire Conference, but as well on behalf of all the other churches and settings of ministry that your giving has impacted, I say thank you. Thank you for what you have given to support this vital work of God. Blessing. Well, we say thank you to Gordon, and we, um, we celebrate the fact that we are part of this larger network of mission ministry. 
I want to invite you all to to do something to celebrate there where you are at this time. If we were in the sanctuary, I might invite you all to go woohoo! But instead, you're at home. So do this. Woohoo! And then say we did that. We did that. We were part of reaching out all around to help God's church reach out to people. Now, that's one way by our OCWM, our church's wider mission giving, that we do this as a church. But another way that you all have been involved in for quite some time is a particular mission in Haiti, where you know that the, to call it a third world country is to kind of do an understatement. We hear about this ministry and this mission from our member and friend, Jackie Dion, who is the key leader um, for our mission in Haiti and our liaison with that partnership. Jackie. Good morning, everybody. Um, so yeah, I was thinking about this and realized that we've been involved with Haiti Ministries for over 11 years, so quite a long time really. Um, and the other thing, I guess the other thing I always think about with Haiti is that um, sometimes it kind of feels like our work is, you know, similar to like throwing a cup of water on a forest fire, <laughs> you know. Um, there's just so much need and we're only able to do so much, but on the other hand, we do help and we have helped um, for a long time and in a lot of ways. So, you know, as you all know, we've helped in two different orphanages, a school, we've helped Haitians be able to run their own businesses so that they can take care of their families so that they don't have to put their children in orphanages. And we've helped students get through university so that they can be self-sufficient. Um, so we have done a lot. Uh, even this year, you know, of course, we weren't able to do our usual fundraisers, things like the lasagna dinner, um, the holiday craft fair, which is a big one for us, uh, drop in the bucket, other things. Um, even so, we had some funds in the Haiti account from previous donations, and so we were able to send $1,200 to the um, CCH orphanage to help them pay for their lease on the building. So that was um, something very important to them, and they were really grateful for that. And uh, Servants for Haiti, which our church has also kind of um, helped support, they were able to run two of the business classes, so that's usually 10 adult Haitians at a time. So two business classes this year and continue to support three students in university. So um, even with all the difficulties this year, we've been able to make some good progress. Uh, another challenge is that we haven't been able to make any mission trips to Haiti since 2018. In 2019, uh, we weren't able to go mostly because there were uh, political protests and a lot of other violence in the country. And so it just, we, it just wasn't safe to, to travel. And of course, in 2020, COVID was the big um, obstacle. In 2021, we anticipate more political unrest um, as elections are supposed to occur. And they're um, predicting that it's, things are gonna continue to be not very stable, but we're keeping an eye on that because you know, really the goal is to be able to resume trips when things are safe, uh, safer down there to do so. And um, I know I always feel like the news I give you really does not encourage you to like come to Haiti with me, but I really would love to encourage you to do that. Again, when it's safe, and you know, we certainly take measures down there to make sure that, that we're as safe as we can be. And it's just an amazing experience. I mean, I've said it many times, but um, we would love to have the participation of um, our DCC members. One thing I wanted to mention is that um, we, there has been one bright spot in Haiti this year. Um, for some reason, the COVID deaths have been very low. Um, and one theory is that because they have such a large uh, percentage of their population that's younger, um, they've experienced fewer deaths. So again, that's kind of a bright spot. Um, 
the children at the CCH orphanage have been healthy and safe. Um, and businesses and schools have been running, at least sporadically. They have had some starts and stops, but they're, they're running. Um, so in any case, you know, uh, to get back to our, our hope and vision for this year and the future, um, as I said, we'd like to resume trips when we can. We certainly want to do some more fundraising so that we can continue the support. Um, and even if that fundraising is virtual, that's something that I think, you know, we definitely want to do. Um, and I'm really glad that Jen talked this morning about you coming up with ideas, because I'd like to invite you to share any of those ideas that you might have with me. Um, if you can think of a creative fundraiser for our Haitian brothers and sisters, that would be really fabulous. Um, so please, you know, get those creative juices flowing. Uh, and, you know, the idea is that we want to, and we will continue to help. It's one person at a time and that's okay. That's enough and, and that counts for a lot. So thank you so much for all your support and um, God bless. Thank you so much, Jackie. Did you all know that you were helping send people to school in Haiti? Give yourselves a woohoo. I did that. We did that. We do that. Another part of our work in God's world is when we put our feet on the ground. Um, and this is one of, I think of as DCC's favorite projects. And in 2020 with COVID, we thought maybe we wouldn't be able to do a crop walk but crop walk helped figure it out. And boy, did we have a crop walk, didn't we, Phyllis? We had a great crop walk. Uh, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about Church World Service crop walks and the history of DCC. Uh, when I came to this church in 2016, I learned that you did have a connection with Church World Service and crop. Uh, and at that time, we were affiliated with the Londonderry Walk. Uh, and since then, the Londonderry Walk sort of fell apart, and we found ourselves another one. It was Seacoast, New Hampshire, Crop Walk. And that involves about eight churches in, in the southern part of, of New Hampshire. And uh, we have been a part of that walk ever since. Uh, and this year, Evelyn Dakota came on board as a co-coordinator with me. And uh, we have, and Diane Shores has also been a recruiter and we've worked hard in 2020 to reconfigure our walk. While crop is, knows what it's doing since it's been in business for about 50 years. Uh, and it has a wonderful plan of how to make a walk work. And uh, so this year we came to DCC in Deerfield and it turned out to be a great thing for us because A, it's not like traveling to down to another town, it's right here. So we mapped out a three mile route and a one mile route and 30 enthusiastic walkers showed up with their pledges because the way the walk works, you're giving a pledge of envelope and you are asked to ask. And that sometimes is a scary word for people to ask. But I've been learning a lot about that word lately. And one thing I've learned is you are responsible for the ask. You're not responsible for the answer. But if you can tell yourself that, it gives you a, a little lighter feeling because people can say no if they can't do it but you're responsible to ask. And the people at, in our church this year raised $6,891. And our local businesses jumped on board and contributed to the walk and sponsored t-shirts. And they contributed $1,500. So our total was greater than any of the other walking communities in the Seacoast area. But together, all of us raised $38,742. This is just one 
crop walk. And there are about 1,200 crop walks across the country. But each crop walk has several churches in it. So that's a lot of people walking together. Now, if you don't know a little bit about Church World Service, it's an agency of the National Council of Churches of the United States. And Church World Service itself, not crop walks, Church World Service started off ministry right after World War II because of the devastation in Europe. So they were there on hand with practical needs of the people who were in trouble. And what we do now is provide both local food banks and development projects around the world. Every continent we're working on, and especially places that they do not have resources. I was privileged to work in a regional office of Church World Service for 10 years in Connecticut. And one of the big words is resources because the places that we worked don't have those resources. And so what we do with the money that is raised is try to provide some resources. Some examples are things like seeds, tools, water systems, wells, and technical training so people can learn to feed themselves. We also sponsor micro enterprise loans. So it's a people to people ministry. And it's exciting to think that our feet on the pavement turn into dollars in another country. So on October 17th, 2021, I hope we'll have a lot of feet on the pavement and maybe we can walk again in Deerfield. I'm gonna advocate for that. So thank you for all you've done. It's been great. Thank you, Phyllis. There, your wells and tools and seeds for farmers, pick your country and we probably have helped. So you know what to do. Woohoo! I did that. We did that. That's part of what we do in the world as DCC. So all of these three examples are examples that DCC has been doing for quite some time. But as was mentioned, DCC also is always open to new ideas. And this year we had a new idea. It came from Amy Lockwood um, who pursued it. And um, now she's going to tell us a little bit about it. And we're gonna share a, a bit of video that explains as well. But first we hear from Amy for a minute. Amy, how'd you get us into this crazy thing? Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, well, I actually heard about this need from the Durham Community Church uh, newsletter where they have a weekly newsletter about uh, outreach and missions and social justice, which is also an idea I love, that weekly newsletter with that focus. Um, so what we are doing is preparing pans of dinner casseroles for Crossroads House, which is a shelter that serves homeless individuals and families in Portsmouth. Um, and all along since COVID started, I've been, Brad and I have talked a lot at home about like, what can we be doing? It's so hard when you're, you know, you, you feel restricted at home and can't get together the way that you used to. And so I, I guess I feel like I'm sort of always scanning for things we could do in this new way. Um, and, and this is a great opportunity because one thing I know about um, Deerfield Community Church people is we're really good at cooking big pans of food. So how do you do that? And at the beginning of COVID, remember, we were all told like, oh, don't share food so that there was none of that happening. And, and you know, we've, our, our understanding is uh, greater now. We know that that is not a risky thing. Um, so we are, people are preparing pans of food at home. And then once a month, we're bringing them together and one Deerfield Community Church driver is bringing them to Crossroads House. So we're gonna turn it over to a video right now that will give you some more context about what Crossroads House is doing for our neighbors. And then um, I'll wrap it up with a little more about what's gonna happen next. A technical detail, Suzanne and Emily and uh, um, uh, Tim, we're gonna run the video until three minutes and 50 seconds. And at three minutes and 50 seconds, hit stop. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Martha Stone, the executive director of Crossroads House. Normally, I'd invite you inside for a tour, but since we can't do that right now, I hope you'll take a few minutes to watch this video. Since 1982, Crossroads House has been providing safe shelter, warm meals, and supportive services to men, women, and children experiencing homelessness. Our doors are always open. The staff is on site 24-7, 365 days a year to provide vital assistance when it is needed. Direct service staff greets everyone. While they're trying to get it um, fixed there in the, in the sanctuary, I will note this is the first time we've tried to run to live stream a video from another source in this way. So it's a new technological challenge for our tech people um, who, believe me, uh, take on these challenges with, um, with great courage and do their best to bring them to us. Um, so hopefully, um, They'll be able to figure out a way to bring us both sound and video here in a second. Um, and I can, um, Lisa, if you'd like, I can just share a little bit more what I was going to do in the wrap up. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, and by the way, speaking of great missions, thank you, tech team, for for jumping into uh, it all uh, so enthusiastically. Um, so um, our mission project started in January. We just did um, um, one round. We had six volunteers each prepared a pan of food. We delivered that all. So we, we delivered three nights of meals for people living in the shelter. Um, and I just want to thank everybody for when we announced this through the EDCC. Um, at first, I told all the missions team members like, hey, everybody like sign up. So we make sure we get some signups. And then so we did, but I ended up taking myself off the list because so many of you have responded and already we have all the shifts through March full. And I'm just so, I just, it's, you guys are so great to just jump right in. Um, so we'll jump over to the video now because it looks like it's here and, um, and then we'll close it up. Hi, I'm Martha Stone, the executive director of Crossroads House. Normally I'd invite you inside for a tour, but since we can't do that right now, I hope you'll take a few minutes to watch this video. Since 1982, Crossroads House has been providing safe shelter, warm meals, and supportive services to men, women, and children experiencing homelessness. Our doors are always open. The staff is on site 24-7, 365 days a year provide vital assistance when it is needed. Direct service staff greets everyone who enters the building with warmth and kindness, whether resident, volunteer, donor, service provider, or someone new seeking help. Imagine you had absolutely nowhere to sleep tonight and you needed to come to Crossroads House. This is one of our emergency shelter dorms where you would stay. And as you can see, there's very little privacy. Our facility houses seven shelter dorms where residents live communally. For residents with an income who are ready to take the next step towards permanent housing, we have transitional shelter units, which can hold up to six single individuals each. We can also provide shelter for up to 12 families. All Crossroads House residents have access to individualized case management, computers with internet access, laundry, phone, as well as the ability to send and receive mail. Hi, I'm Michael Jacobs, and I'm the kitchen coordinator at Crossroads House. We prepare three healthy meals a day for our residents. For years, volunteers have played an integral part in making sure residents are well nourished by preparing these meals. The families and individuals who seek our assistance almost always have needs beyond shelter. To meet the needs of those we serve, Crossroads House offers a variety of supportive services tailored to meet each person's specific needs. Crossroads House partners with several agencies in the community who provide critical wraparound services like medical care, dental care, mental health and psychiatric counseling, and life skills training on site for our residents. 
Our partner agencies can use this fully equipped medical room as well as other spaces at the shelter to meet with our residents and deliver the services they need. Case management is at the heart of the work we do at Crossroads House. All residents work with a highly skilled social worker who helps to build an individualized roadmap for each person's return to permanent housing. One of the greatest challenges our residents face is finding affordable housing and navigating the complex public housing system. Low vacancy rates and historically high rents have exacerbated this already difficult situation for many people in our community, and applying for assistance can be confusing and overwhelming. Case managers are well versed in the resources available locally to aid residents with job searches, budgeting, housing searches, applications for assistance, and applying for and gathering identification documents like birth certificates, social security cards, and photo IDs. Former residents have access to housing stability case managers who work with them in their new homes, providing guidance during what can be a difficult transition. These case managers help connect people with resources in their own community and can also serve as a resource for landlords should any issue arise helping to avoid evictions and returns to homelessness. Crossroads House all There's no good place to cut off, but Amy. So you can Google Crossroads House and see the rest of that video if you'd like. Um, so you saw um, those nice pre-COVID pictures of all the volunteers in the kitchen. That kitchen program was almost 100% volunteer and none of that can happen since COVID. And that is why this we have this opportunity to bring um, food from remote locations there. So um, as I mentioned, all our shifts that we've scheduled through March are full right now. Thanks to all of you. Uh, we are gonna be looking at whether um, we can expand with more shifts um, and then eventually hopefully tra translate this into an in-person ministry uh, once, once COVID um, steps back and lets us all get back into normal. So thank you all so much. All right, you all know the routine now. You all are helping feed folks in a homeless shelter that has fabulous, services in Portsmouth that collects homeless folks from all around New Hampshire, the seacoast area and into central and into north. So woohoo, we did that, we do that, you do that in Christ's name. The least of these in so many ways, in so many places are touched by the mission ministries of Deerfield Community Church. And that, my friends, is something to celebrate and to give thanks to God for. Yay, DCC. Yay, missions ministry. Thanks be to God. Let us join now in prayer. God, we give you thanks for the many opportunities you offer to us to serve to serve with your love in your name, to bring resources, love, and hope to those in need all around our world, here in Deerfield, in our state, in our country, and in far off places. We give you thanks, God, for all the ways that you invite us to care for each other and your creation. We pray in this time that you might be with us and continue to strengthen us and empower us for your work in the world. We pray as well, O oh God, that you might send your spirit with all its healing, with all its peace, with all its empowerment to all the people of your world. We ask that you might touch people's lives again and again. And in this time, we lift up to you the names of those whom we hold near and dear and other names of those whom we know of who are in need. Oh God, hear our prayers. 
Alyssa and Connie. My son-in-law, Brian. Kimmy. Kimmy. Family Joe. of Sheldon. Cooper. Fred and Mary. Jan. Patsy. Cousin Jan with the loss of her son. The family of low family friends, Albert Willie Sheldon, who died of COVID this past week. Norma. God, we yeah. give thanks for the love that we share with these named and those who go unnamed but are in our hearts. We give you thanks, God, for the ways that you continue to be present in our world. We continue to pray for all those who are struggling with COVID, for those who are serving and caring for people who have COVID, as well as those who are helping to do testing and administering the vaccine in so many ways, oh God. We pray that you would continue to empower your people, that we might fight this disease and this pandemic might come to an end in our midst. We pray as well, oh God, for our country, that we might go forward day by day, that we might find pathways to new unity, that we might find pathways to making peace between and amongst each other and in our world. This day, O oh God, is a day that you have made and in which you have called us to serve you and your creation. We seek to do so, and we thank you for the blessings enabling us to do all that we do together as the Deerfield Community Church. Bless our church. Bless the coming pastor, Kurt Walker, and his family. And bless us all. This we pray in Jesus' powerful name. Amen and amen. Well, dear friends, when we first conceived of this service, we thought of it really as a celebration and a celebration of all that we do. So as we move from prayer to our closing hymn that Tim will announce, I want you to move with the spirit of, you ready? Woohoo! We do that. We do this. We are awesome by God's power and with God's love. Tim, take it away. And what a fitting hymn to close us this morning. We're going to sing together all four verses of Together We Serve. Together we serve, united by love, inviting God's word to the glorious feast. We work and we pray through sorrow and joy, extending your love to the last and the least. We seek to become a beacon of hope, a lamp for the heart and a light for the feet. We learn year by year to let love shine through until we see Christ in each person we meet. We welcome the scared, the wealthy, the poor, the busy, the lonely, and all who need care. We offer a home to those who will come, our hands quick to help, our hearts ready to dare. 
Together by grace we witness and work, remembering Jesus in whom we grow strong. Together we serve in spirit and truth, remembering love is the strength of our song. Dear friends, don't go away for very long because here in a little bit, we're going to celebrate, um, uh, uh, yes, we're going to celebrate our church some more in our annual meeting. Um, but as you go into the world this week, know that you go with the power of God's love. Know that you go and you are empowered to share God's love, God's hope, and joy. Be ye joyful and share the joy, dear friends. That's what you do as Deerfield Community Church and what you do as God's people. And for that, I say, woohoo! Thanks be to God. Blessings. <laughs> <laughs>